I wanted to talk a little about how I now do the edges on large cubes because it's a little different from how I used to. And I approach it the same way whether it's the 5x5, five five, the 6x6, six six, the 7x7, seven seven, or even the 8 and the 9. I do the... so I'll start with the 5 and show you what I do. I do all of the centers first. So we have already finished the centers on this, and I believe I have another tutorial about that, or I could add one later. The next thing I do is I set out to do edges, and what I will ultimately want to do is four edges for whatever I choose to be the top, and four edges for the bottom, and then I'll address the four that are left in a slightly different way. But... Um, what I do when I start out is I try to find some that are already paired to start out. So here's a good place to start. Red and white are already paired. So what I will do is I like to have these over here in the front left. I'm right-handed. It just seems to make more sense. And so the way I will do this one now is the red center will always be on either the top or the bottom, and the orange will always be on the other. So that's important to bear in mind because we won't want to disrupt that even though we'll be disrupting these other centers when we move the edges. So the first goal is to find the other red and white piece and we know since it's an end piece I don't need to be looking at any of these basically center ones so I can just focus on edge pieces and here I find it there. So what I like to do is note to myself which color of these two is facing me? So the red is facing me. And then when I found the piece, I decide, is that color that's on top, so in this case red, is it the same as the one that's facing me or different? In this case, red is red, it's facing me. It'll make sense in a minute as I do another one. So if it's the same, then I want to move it to here after I rotate I'm out of focus a little. After I rotate the cube so that this side is up here. So I'll rotate this face. So I'm bringing this side up. I'll rotate this around so that piece we were talking about is now here. And then I have to reset that. So that has brought this piece down to here, which is oriented perfectly just to slide it over to there. So once I've slid it over to there, I have a completed three-piece edge, and I can move it up to the top layer. So I move it up and then move another one down. When I'm deciding which one to move down, I like to start with ones that have white on them. It's just easier for me to pick. So I kind of like that orange and white one. I kind of like this green and white one, even though these two are flipped. So I'll bring this down. So now I'm probably going to look for a green and white. Notice that the red is still intact and the orange is still intact, but I've messed up this center, this center, this one, and the one back here. But that's okay as long as I always remember to undo when I move this front face. <clears throat> so I'm just going to look and see if I can find where that green and white one, that other green and white one is. Ah, and I don't find it yet, but I see a blue and white here, two of them, and they're oriented right, so it would be easier to go to this one. I only need that center piece, which is blue and white. So again, since I know it's the center center, I don't have to look at this position or this position or this position, etc. I just need to look in the center positions for a blue and white, and it was easy to see it's not on the top. We've already spun the cube around. We know it's not on any of the middle layers, so that must mean it's on the bottom. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this way of doing it, but I like to rotate the cube around, so now it's on the top. And again, these videos are just for my own edification, not necessarily the best way to do something, nor the fastest, but this is how I do it. So now I know the blue and white's gonna be on the top. I quickly scan and I see it's there. 
I do the same thing that I did before insofar as deciding which color of the two is facing me. It's blue. I look to see which color is on top. It's also blue. So like the case before, I want it to go here. So I rotate this front slice to move this edge up here. I rotate this around, so I put that piece we're talking about there, and then I have to be sure to rotate this back down. And now it's positioned exactly where I need it to be so I can just slide it over and line those up. So I do the same thing I did before. I want to move this up to here. And I'll just bring one down. I like the white and orange because I like to look at the white ones. I'll bring that down. So now, as you can see, the top center is still intact. The bottom is still intact, but the sides are disrupted, but that's OK. So let's see if we can find another orange and white. Okay, I don't see it anywhere around there, but when I was doing that, I noticed there's a green and white, and there's a green and white. So I can't just move one of them over to the other because they would be misaligned. So one thing I can do is I can look for the other green and white piece, uh, and there it is on top. And what I can do is, again, I can decide, okay, <clears throat> excuse me, what color do I want here? Well, white's facing me. This time it's different, the green is on top. So instead of bringing it to here, I want to bring it over to here. So like before, I noticed that, I'm a little out of focus, there we go. I noticed that the white of the white and green is facing me. This is the one I found where green is on top. So this time they're different. So instead of bringing this piece around to here, this time I'm going to want to bring it over to here. So I bring this side up and notice the green and white piece that was wrong is getting moved up there temporarily. I'm going to bring the piece I do want over and I'm going to bring this back down. And so that's done two things for us. It's gotten this bad one sort of out of the way, which is good, and it's brought the one I wanted down oriented correctly so I can just move it over and they line up. And now I also automatically know where the third one is. It's right up there because that's where it was a minute ago. So we look at what color is facing us. It's white. We see what color is on top. It's white. So we want it to come here. So I flip this around, move this over, flip this back down. We know it's now down here and it's oriented correctly so I can just move it over. And I've completed that, so I can move that up, down, and over. And so I continue like that, finishing so that I have four finished edges on top and four on the bottom. And I'll go off camera and do that and come right back. So now I've done most of my first eight edges, but I wanted to show you a couple of things. So you'll notice that the top and bottom, the orange and red centers, are still intact. These side centers are not aligned together, but that's all right as long as I keep top and bottom unaltered. Um, on one of the sides, let's call it the top right now, uh, we have a completed edge, a completed edge, a completed edge, and a completed edge. So there's four that are done there. And then on the other one, which is now the top, we have one completed edge, another completed edge, and another completed edge. So I only have one more to go of my first eight. So what I wanted to show you here is I'm going to do the orange and blue. In this case, unlike what I've shown you before, I don't have this third piece up on top. It happens to be down here already in these middle layers, but it's oriented wrong. I can't just move it over to here because it's flipped. So what I need to do is I need to do a flippy move that moves these on the right edge and flips them so the orange and blue the orange will be on this side. In this particular case, the orange and green. The orange will be here and the green will be over here. I do a shorter move than most people do, um, but it works 
brilliantly for me, and I don't care yet about corners because we're not to that point. So what that move will be is I can either, obviously, flip this edge so it'll work with that, or I could flip this edge. It doesn't really matter. I'll just flip this since it's already positioned at the right, and that's how I like to do my moves. Sorry, this keeps coming in and out of focus. So what I do is an R, an F prime, a U, an R prime, and an F, and that has flipped these, and now this one is in a proper place that I can just put it over and finish it. So I'll find that last slot where I need to put it. Of course, I move it to one that's solved. I move the unsolved one to where it was and bring it down. Now we have all four on the top done, and on the bottom, that's now the top, we have all four there. So we only have the four center, center level, let's call it, ish edges to do. And the way I do this is what I think is different than I used to. So that's what I wanted to show you. The first thing we have to do is we have to realign the centers. So I need to move the green over. So green is all intact, white is all intact, blue and yellow, and of course your red and orange. If you've done everything correctly, that will work. If when you try to move one over, you have a mismatch of rows, then that means somewhere along the line you did something incorrectly and you'll need to fix that. So what I do now on an odd cube, like a five, we have three pieces that make up an edge. And the centers of those edge pieces, like this orange and yellow, or this red and yellow, they need to pretty much be fixed. So, like in this case, these two are flipped. You would think that you could choose whichever one you want to flip the other way, but it doesn't work that way on odd ones, so we're not going to flip this one. We're going to end up flipping this. But first of all, let's see if we have any that are closer to being done, and in fact we do. Here we have two red and yellows. So let's find the third red and yellow piece, ah, and it's down here. And this is exactly how you want it to be aligned. In this case, what you do is you look at these that you want, and we're gonna to wanna to put this piece up here. The way to do this is make sure that the color that's facing you, so in this case, the yellow, is also the color that's facing you here. And I'll show you the opposite of that in a minute. But So this one is perfect. So what we want to do is we want to bring this slice over to pick this up. And so you'll see in a minute. So we're going to bring this slice over. And remember that flippy move I did before? If that flips every one of these, it will end up not only flipping the colors this way, but it will also end up putting this up here and these down here. So you'll see. So I do my flippy move again. That has flipped all of these and put this perfectly so that when we reorient the centers, we move the white back, that has perfectly aligned these and we've now finished that edge. So we just continue like that doing these other three edges. So let's find one. So this is an interesting one. We have the green and orange. These two are flipped. You might worry about how to deal with this, but don't. When we put the right one that goes there, it'll take care of it. So we find the other piece, and look, it's right here. As I said before, we want the color that's facing us, which is orange, to be the color here that's facing us. This is not. So we have two choices. We could either do the flippy move already before we move anything, then it will be facing us, or since all of our centers are aligned, it's just easier to rotate this right side 180 degrees because we haven't misaligned any centers. And now that piece that we want down here with the orange facing us is here. So the orange and green, see that? So what we want to do is we want to bring the slice over to grab it, kind of like we did before, but we only moved it 90 degrees. So now we'll move it all the way over here to grab this. I'm just rotating the cube so this is at the right now. Like before, we want to flip this side. So we 
do our flippy move. And now we move this slice back. In this case, we had moved it 180 degrees, so we'll move it back 180 degrees. And look, that has moved that right piece there. And obviously, since it had to put it there, it moved the wrong one out of the way. So let's go find that wrong one. Orange and green with orange facing us. It happens to be over here, but orange is not facing us. So if we do rotation of 180 degrees of this right side, kind of like we did before, now it's perfect. The color that's facing us on this side is the color that's facing us on this side, orange and orange. So we move the piece kind of that's opposite that row. We move that row over to grab it. We do the flippy move here. And then when we move it back to reorient the centers, we finish that. And since we're doing these one at a time, we have not messed up that previous edge that we did. So we now do one more. I'll go ahead and do the blue and red. Similar situation as before, that's not blue facing us. So I'll show it you the other way, actually. We could have just rotated this 180 degrees like I showed you before and then gone over and gotten it. But I'll put that back. I said the other thing we could do is we could go ahead and flip this with our flippy move. Focus the camera. So the flippy move is like that. Now the blue and red, blue and red, the blue is facing us. So it's perfect. It's what we want. Remember, we want to bring a row over to grab it. <clears throat> Excuse me, the reason we don't bring the row over that it's on, if we went like that to grab it, we've already moved it out of the way, so we can't grab it. So that's why you move the one that's kind of opposite it. So the one that's kind of opposite is down here. So we want to move this row. We do our flippy flippy. And we move the row back. And we've now combined those two. We have one more. It's there, same situation. It's not pointing correctly, so we could either rotate it over here and go grab it, or we can do the flippy flippy first. Now it's where we want it to be. Blue is facing us. Blue is facing us. So we move this over to get it. And we finished that. So now we have three edges. <clears throat> and of course, our eight that were already done. So this leaves us with the last edge, which these are flipped, and this is called a parity. This happens sometimes, but not always. Sometimes at this point, this is already solved and everything is fine. But often, you'll get this parity where you need to do a special move to reverse these. And I'm going to show you that in the next video because I have lots of different cases with that on different cubes. So that's basically how I do edges. This was shown on a 5x5, five five, but I do it the same on the larger cubes.